There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel on a very special, very tail between my legs sheepish video in which I reckon with something that I've been saying so many times that most of you have been thinking, yeah, I think he's protesting too much, where I have said, oh no, I have more than 50 books that I'm supposedly currently reading and it's fine, it's just fine. Well, it's not fine and so I have been thinking a smidge more rationally, and I've come up with a new plan, and that is the topic of this video, and it took me so long to get everything, the books, the notes, the lights, the mic, everything, that I just sat down and saw, oh, you get to see into my bathroom. Well, please enjoy the view, because I'm not getting up to rearrange anything else. So I finished one book earlier today, and that brought my current reads down to 52. It has been high before, but it's never been this high. And I am committed to an ongoing series of book chats, Zoom chats about a book, like kind of pseudo buddy reads and actual buddy reads and this, that, and the other thing. Often I have to read a book for a guest appearance on a bookish podcast. So I've got commitments, which I'm absolutely delighted by, but I keep adding <laughs> to the current reads. And I'm going to try something. It's not new. I've tried to do this before. So this has a probably 48% chance at best of working. But a few years ago, I tried to shrink my current reads down to six ongoing current reads maximum. And I was bored to tears because I like to only read about 10 pages per book in one sitting and often in one day. And so only having six books to choose from was just no, it just didn't suit me at all. But... With more than 50 books, even anything 30 books and above, what happens is books just fall through the cracks like I haven't. There's two-thirds, I'm sure, of the books that are currently on my current reads I haven't picked up in months. So that, you know, what's the point of that? So this is what I've come up with. As of today, I'm whittling down my current reads from 52 books down to 14. And the maximum, from now on, korekara, as they say in Japanese, that I will allow it to get up to is 15. And ideally, by maybe, say, the end of summer, I'd like to have it down to a maximum of a dozen. But if I'm able to juggle 15, 14 or 15, I'm not going to worry about bringing it down. But 12 probably is better, and then if I'm still really not keeping up, then 10 by the end of the year. So that's what I've come up with, and what I'm going to do is show you the books that have made the cut, the books that are going to stay on my current reads that I'm going to read, and hopefully I'll actually finish them in the foreseeable future. And then I'll just do a screenshot of all the books that didn't make the cut. I am obviously free to pick those up whenever I clear a space for them, and there's quite a bit of a hierarchy of which ones I'm uh, chomping at the bit to get to fit in to the 14 or 15 books but I'm not going to go into the minutiae of that. And are there any exceptions I'm allowing? I don't think so. Maybe the one exception is if a library book comes in and I can't fit it in, and I guess I might make this for any book that I want to read, if I can read it within a week. No, let's put it this way. If I can read it before the next Friday reads, then I will allow myself to go over the limit. I gotta give myself a little room to act out, don't you think? <laughs> I think 14, 15 books, a dozen books will give me lots of room to keep stimulated by a, a bunch of different books on the go and it's okay to put a book down for a week, but any longer than that or any longer than 10 days, um, you know, it, the reading... No, that's not true. I still... <laughs> I, I'm saying things I don't believe. I have put books down for a month and picked them up and did a little bit of refresher reading or whatever and still had a really rich, deep experience and gave a very in-depth book review or talking about it on my Friday reads or read it for, talked about it in a Zoom discussion video or something. So uh, no, but uh, really 52 books, it's beyond the pale. So I'm not calling these bales. I'm moving them into my on hold folder. The on hold folder means I'm planning to return to them. I'm not bailing on them because I didn't like them. Something had to go. 
Okay, so I'll show you the 14 books I have here. They're not in any particular order, and I've talked about most of them in Friday Reads. I'm not going to say very much about them here, other than to just alert you to the fact that these are ongoing. So I mentioned this last week. This is Elizabeth Jane Howard's 1969 novel, Something in Disguise. Spoiler alert. Ten pages in. I'm loving it already. And that's a Buddy Read with my dear friend Leah from Calgary. Maybe I should have said another thing about Buddy Reads. I have Heidi and Joe that I do back-to-back -back Buddy Reads. We finish one book what this week. We start another Buddy Read the following week. And so I always will replace one of those books on my 14 current reads with the next one for those buddy reads. Leah and Sonia, I do buddy reads sporadically through the year, so I just have to be really on top of making sure I have a space for those buddy reads. This is the buddy read I've started with Joe Smith, Mahaswata Devi's novel Mirror of the Darkest Night, translated from the Bengali by Shamya Dasgupta. Loving this this is what I'm reading for people April. Now that I'm down to 15 books, 14 books, maybe I'll actually finish reading it in people April. I doubt it. Young Bloomsbury by Nino Strachey. It's about the queer goings on in the Bloomsbury circle. I'm doing an audiobook ebook combo of the Irish novel Strange Flowers by Donald Ryan, which I'm loving. I probably will maybe have that finished this week, but that's another one. And a little bit of a spoiler alert for this week's Friday Reads. Um, last night I started this novel, The Hearing Test, by Eliza Barry Callahan, and it's knocking my socks off in the first 15 pages. I couldn't put it down. And if that continues, I may be finished it before Friday, but mm, it's not my style. I'm reading last year's Booker winner, Prophet Song, by Paul Lynch, and this will be not really a buddy read. But like It's my, my dear friend Gwen here in town. She and I are going to meet when we've both finished reading it and discuss it. For my Patreon read-along, we're discussing of Human Bondage. We had a great Zoom chat about the first half last week, and we'll do talk about the second half in about six weeks. And another thing about this, so this is a tome. So I'm going to keep one spot on my reduced current reads for tomes. So when I finish this, I'm going to start another tome and see if now that I'm reading far fewer books that I can keep up with the tome. We'll see. This is Impush's novel, The Broken River Tent. Impetumi in the Benny's first novel. We talked a little bit about it in last week's Friday Reads. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, he was my mystery guest. And Bob the Booker and I are going to have a chat with him when we both finished. And this got waylaid, not just because of the 50 plus books I was reading, but for personal reasons that you all know about, I think. And I really want to pick up the pace with this again, because it's so good. Slowly making my way through this, and I would like to read it at a bit brisker of a pace because it's riveting. Now, My Friends by Hisham Matar. It's absolutely spellbinding. This is another collaboration. The indigenous novel Mean Spirit by Linda Hogan, which is about the same thing as that silly movie. Both the novel and the movie are based on historical fact. The movie was made from a book, and I have reserved judgment on whether it was silly, but the movie is all white savior bullshit. And this one is not White Savior. It's Linda Hogan is an indigenous writer. So it's about when all the oil people were murdering all the indigenous people because they wanted their land, because they wanted their oil. It's absolutely incredible. And now that I'm reading far fewer books, I'll be able to get through it. This is a library book that came in a couple weeks ago. I've got a fairly good start on it, but I didn't feel I was quite ready to do a preliminary check-in. And I never told you on my Friday reads that I was going to be starting it. And I hope it's going to continue to be as good as it's starting out. Canadian novel Making Up the Gods by Marion Agnew. And I'm not going to say any more than that, but I should be ready, hopefully this Friday or soon thereafter, to give you a preliminary check-in. But it's starting out really, really good. I think it's a debut, too. I've been reading this Canadian gay novel forever. And if, you've, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know all the personal reasons why my reading has been a kind of hit and miss for the last year or more. And this, my, my reading of this has suffered, but my enjoyment of it has not wavered one bit. And that's The Family Way by Christopher Dorado. He was a mystery guest way back when. I'll put a link to that mystery guest, guest chat. And when I finish this, I'm going to have a long form chat with Christopher about this, his most recent novel, and his debut, which I read and loved, The Geography of Pluto. This one definitely made the cut. And this is going to be another 
dedicated slot in my current reads. The books that I said when I made that video in January that I either have to read them, bail on them or whatever, or unhaul them at the end of the year. I think six books or I forget how many there were. And this is the first one this year that I've started, Cormorant Lake by Faith Marino. Should finish this up fairly soon. And then when I finish it, I'll start another book on that same list. And the last one is David Carpenter's, one of his first works of published fiction, Jewels. I'm reading this to my cousin Mary Jean, and I'm going to be interviewing David Carpenter about it. I will keep this as a separate lane for whatever I meant I'm reading to Mary Jean, so that there's always room on my TBR. All right, so there's probably a sizable percentage of you that are watching this video, if you're still watching, who think, reading 14 books at one time? That's insane! Are you crazy? And you may be right, but it's a far cry from pretending to be reading 52, so I'm going to do a quick screenshot of all the ones that didn't make the cut. And if you have any comments about any of these books, what you think um, I should prioritize for the ones that didn't make the cut or any comments whatsoever, uh, how crazy do you think I am? Any comments, welcome, and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>